Everybody knows the power of three. Triples are better for a third time this week in four days on the early line. Sports Grid's Tom Vecchio joins us for the prop perspective. He was here Monday night for the Monday night football doubleheader. He was here on Tuesday for the frozen frenzy and the start of a new NBA season. And once again on this Thursday, ahead of a hugely impactful Thursday night football game in L.A. between the Rams and the Vikings. We've got the World Series starting tomorrow. We've got four games in the NBA. What can Tom Vecchio do? The answer is nothing. He does everything. He's here once again. Vecchio, thank you for your time. Of course, thanks for having me. Yeah, World Series starts tomorrow with my Yankees taking on the Dodgers. Uh, big Thursday night game, as you said, the return of Cooper yeah. Cup to the Rams offense. And ultimately, what does that look like? And really not too much of an issue if you're trying to get in the mix. You, of course, can always use a cup. Oh, there it mm. is. I was waiting for what that pun would be today. Tom Vecchio delivers a bar once more. So Cooper Cup expected to return. We got the report just about an hour ago. Vecchio Puka Nakua could be on his way back tonight as well against Minnesota. The Vikings suffer their first loss of the season last week against Detroit, but still a five and one football team laying two and a half points short week road test Thursday night football against just a two and four team but don't tell that to the sharps or the spread 90 percent of the bets on the spread favor minnesota it was three points in favor of the vikings earlier this week now it's under that key number of a flat three at just two and a half vecchio it feels a little bit fishy tonight how do you make Mm. sense of the numbers for thursday night football yeah, this is certainly one of the tougher games we've had this year. There's so much going on. I think we'd all agree that Minnesota is the superior team in this matchup, but the Rams all of a sudden about to get all of these reinforcements can really change things. So I'm actually looking a little bit on the Rams side of things of what I'm expecting. And I think a lot of this comes down to the Minnesota defense, which I find like really, really fascinating. Uh, they're on the six fewest points per game, the second fewest rushing yards per game, but they're also allowing the third most passing yards per game. So we often see them jump out ahead and they're up by 14 nothing, 17 to 7, whatever it is. And the opposing teams are often playing with positive passing game scripts. So they're not giving up rushing, which means it might not be a big Kyrie Williams week. And then the Rams set to get these reinforcements at wide receiver. They could be in for a big week. Let's take a look at the quarterback position here, how maybe that factors into some reinforcements coming back for the Rams. The Matthew Stafford, 242 and a half as his passing prop. If you look at Sam Darnold, that's 245 and a half. The touchdown props, both listed at one and a half, but also juiced Matthew Stafford plus money at a plus 116 price and Sam Darnold at a minus 122. If we're looking at Stafford and Darnold, which quarterback has the attention for you tonight? It's got to be Stafford, and it could be for a variety of reasons, especially, again, if they're going to be playing from behind. I I like Stafford's passing attempts. I like him for the yards. And ultimately, I kind of like him for an interception. Again, just based on the volume of passes he may be, like, forced to have tonight, there's a good chance that he does throw an interception against a good defense, which, again, will put the Rams playing from behind, I think does bring some correlation with the over on his passing attempts. So I actually like the Rams for a lot of different things. tonight. I think we can, of course, look to the, the main options on the Vikings. But, man, I think Stafford's got some juice tonight. He might have some juice, Vecchio, and he might have his two top targets back. Puka Nakua was battling with an injury all offseason long, tried to work his way back for game one, never fully healthy. Cooper Cup was fully healthy only for that opening game. 14 receptions on 21 targets for 110 Mm. yards and a touchdown. Let's look at the running backs because they're two guys, Vecchio, that do a ton. Kyron Williams, anytime TD price, now minus 195. I guess it makes sense as he has scored a rushing touchdown in nine consecutive regular season games. He's got nine total TDs in six games this year. Aaron Jones has been a revelation for this Minnesota offense. How do you approach a great running back duo on this Thursday night? 
I actually like the over on receiving yards for both of them. And I like Kyron Williams under 73 and a half yards. And, it, you know, that may not be the most popular spot. I know how good he can be. But if we look back to the, especially really just the first two weeks when we did see Cooper Cup play, you know, we're not seeing Kyron Williams involved. Again, they were playing from behind versus the Lions. They're playing from behind versus the Cardinals. And if we're having these reinforcements that I'm at least expecting, definitely with Cup, maybe not with Cooper Nakui, that's not confirmed yet. But if they're going to be passing the ball more, it just means we're not going to be seeing a whole lot from Kyron Williams. Again, Again, he's also going up against a very, very tough defense, and some of that is great game script in favor of the Vikings. So I like the over on both of their receiving yards and the under on Kyron Williams' rushing yards especially. Let's talk about some of those receivers now. Justin Jefferson, the mm. lead dog there for the Minnesota Vikings. 84 and a half is his prop here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Cooper Cup, from a Rams perspective, 66 and a half. A lot of guys with some balance between the 40s, 30s, and 20s. But the question is going to be, I'll start here first. Cooper Cup, 66 and a half. Any negative effects if Puka Nakua comes back to this game? And also with Cooper Cup coming back off of injury, is that a no play or an absolute must play for you tonight? This is like, this is the big question. And I think a lot of it comes down to A, will Puka Nakua actually be back? And then will either of them be under some type of snap count, you know, play limit, whatever that be? My take on Cooper Cup is he's, if he goes under this number, it's going to be because of some type of play count. If Puka doesn't play, like, I don't see a reason why Cooper Cup can't have 100 yards, right? If they need to, who are they going to pass the ball to? Like, why are they going to continue yeah. to get Tutu Atwell involved at a high rate? Like, sure, he'll see some targets. Colby Parkinson will see some targets. But ultimately, if it's just Cooper Cup back tonight and not Puka Nakua, there's no reason he can't push towards 100 yards tonight. Mm. Tom, let me ask you this. Put on your odds maker's hat for just a second. If Puka Nakua is, in fact, active in lines up out there tonight and there is a prop associated what do you think his number is? Does it detract at all for the number from Cooper Cup, which is currently at 66 and a half? I, I would certainly say Cup's number probably comes down a little bit. I would expect Puka Nakua's number to be a little bit lower, uh, maybe in the mid 50s. And ultimately, if, if that's what you're anticipating, you know, uh, Tom Pelserio said that Puka Nakua could come back. If you like Cooper Cup, you may want to wait. Because if that number drops to 63, 64, whatever it is, like you can jump on the over then, and it's not like Cooper Cup can't have a big game. Again, Minnesota third most passing yards allowed per game. And again, if some of that is game script, that just plays in the favor of Cooper Cup tonight. Yeah. All right, so before we flip it over to Major League Baseball, Tom, those top props, once again, let the people know out there where they should be looking tonight for some action. Yeah, the, the touchdowns tonight are really, really tough. There's just no one I have a whole lot of interest in. I think Stafford is going to be out there throwing the ball. I don't expect this to be a big game for Kyron Williams. So Kyron Williams under 73 and a half, Stafford over 33 and a half attempts. And I like Aaron Jones specifically over 24 and a half receiving yards. Uh, the Rams, they've allowed actually the fifth fewest, fewest passing yards up to opposing wide receivers. And we've seen Jones at 23 yards or more in five of the six games. Both these teams are actually in the top five, top six, top 10 in the league when it comes to quarterback pressure per drop back, hurry rate per drop back. So if these quarterbacks don't have the time to look downfield to adjust in Jefferson, we're going to see a lot of quick passes. And that's where we see the over on Kyron Williams receiving and Aaron Jones receiving yards as well. JJ at 84 and a half the number, but he's had at least 81 receiving yards in five straight, five receiving touchdowns this year. To Vecchio's point, despite how good Kyron Williams has been as of late, Minnesota gives up a ton of passing yards, but only 80 yards per game on the ground, second best in the NFL. Quickly here, Vecchio, in this final minute, we are on the eve of the World Series. Tomorrow night, it starts inside Dodger Stadium. L.A., a home favorite. L.A., a favorite to win a World Series ever so soon slightly in the outright numbers against your New York Yankees. What is your best play either for the World Series overall, the series betting, or even game number one? Yeah, it's certainly tough to take a, a bet on the series overall, considering I am a Yankees fan. But I think for game one, let's keep it super simple. Tommy Edmond for an RBI up at plus 260. We've seen him slowly move the water, and in the final game against the Mets, he was batting cleanup, but we did not see Freddie Freeman play in that game. But ultimately, if he's batting fifth, sixth, or seventh, we have all these great hitters, Otani, Betts, Freeman, whoever might yeah. be on base ahead of him. Tommy Edmond is going to see good pitches. He has, a, he has 12 RBIs in 11 games throughout the playoffs. 260 yeah. for that number. 11 of those RBIs in the six games in the NLCS against the Mets. Tom, thanks for all your work this week. More Thursday Night Football next.
We give you our best bets and our breakdown. One final time for Thursday Night Football, the first game of week number eight of this NFL season. DRS, I think we've done a good job of breaking down every angle, the significance of this game in week number eight. What it might mean for Minnesota, a 5-1 and one football team that suffered its first loss of the season a week ago. Even if they fall to 5-2, and two, I still think we would all say... Vikings aren't fraudulent. Maybe they're not the best team in the NFC, but still expect them to factor into the NFC North title race and, of course, a playoff spot. It is much more impactful for the Rams, especially with all of the swirling rumors that the Rams could be heavy sellers. Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford, perhaps, ahead of the trade deadline. If the Rams lose this game, even if they cover, if the Rams lose this game and fall to 2-5, and five, that might be the path forward for Los Angeles this season. If they win, though, it is a new season at three and four winners of two straight. So let's start there with how this market has been changing. The Vikes were a three-point favorite earlier in the week. Despite getting 90% of the bets on the spread, they are now just a two-and-a-half-point favorite. What does that tell you, DRS, about the expected outcome tonight inside SoFi? It tells us we're going to get a close game, which if you look at the M.O. for both of these squads for the majority of their games so far, they've all been close games, whether it's winning or losing those close games, whether it's comebacks or falling short at the end of games. So I do see the feel for getting back to the understanding of how it makes a line. You don't pick anything out of the hat and just say, looks good tonight on the two and a half, as I like to say. There's a reason for this number, and there's a reason why it's dropping, even though most of the bets and most of the money is coming down here on the Minnesota Vikings. That line from three to two and a half is a very telling sign through that key number of three on the FanDuel Sportsbook. And also, we're not getting the same approach from both teams. We know what we're getting out of the Minnesota Vikings. They're really good. They're healthy enough coming into this football game. You understand what's going to take place. But from a Rams side of things, boy, you want to throw a wrench into everything. Bring back Cooper Cup, who could be healthy tonight. Let's just say he's as healthy as he's ever going to be. Sure. Same thing with Puka Nakua. Hey, you know what? That knee injury wasn't as bad as expected. That's why I was able to come back so quick. I feel fantastic, and my legs are fresh. Throw those two into this environment with Matthew Stafford. And I'm going like, wait a second. I was playing the past couple weeks here with dead ends at wide receiver. Now I'm getting back Pro Bowl players here and maybe the best rookie campaign we've ever seen in Puka Nakua. Sign me up right away on this. So that sort of throws things a little bit out of whack, which leads me into saying, are the Rams really a live dog in this game? Or are you overthinking yourself? Donnie, you know the Minnesota Vikings have been a good team. They just have to win this game by a field goal. You're betting on a team with the Rams that hasn't had much success. But again, trying to convince yourself yeah. on that point that this isn't the same Rams team we're going to get tonight than we saw the past three weeks. And they're still A, winning football games, or B, playing close to some football games as well. So that's the tough thing you're going to have to decipher. But the best part about that is, Legalized sports gambling, the FanDuel Sportsbook, you don't have to pick a side or a total. You can really get after some of those prop bets. You certainly can, and you can just see what happens live. Is Cooper Cup 100% yeah. healthy and effective? True. Is Puka Nakua, despite the reports, actually active and lining up out there, ready to make an impact? That's where Donnie, Lisi, and Kevin Walsh, of course, factor into the conversation. NFL football in-game live game day on this Thursday night. Donnie, mm -hmm. from the spread perspective, if the number was still at three, it would be the largest spread in Minnesota's favor this year. An underdog a few times as well. Again, to the idea they play close games whether or not they are expected to. The Rams just one and five ATS this season. They were only booked as a favorite last week against the Raiders. They did not cover one and four ATS as an underdog. But some of those games, not necessarily blowouts outside of week two against Arizona. The Rams have gone under in two straight as the defense has been healthier over in three of their first four. Minnesota under in four of six. Under in all four games against non-divisional foes. The only two overs for the Vikes against their NFC North competition. A win, 31-29 against the Packers. A loss, 31-29 against the Lions a week ago. They've allowed 60 points in their two games against their divisional opponents. They've only given up 47 in total in their four other games. Here are the totals for tonight, so you can see that look. 48 and a half is the over-under. Now let's get to the props. If Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua are back, DRS. How does that change your assessment of Matthew Stafford against its Vikings defense? Oh, it's the third most passing yards this season. 
Yeah, it raises it up, too, because we're taking a look at maybe one of my most bettable numbers that I've seen over the past couple of years for me is always the over one and a half touchdown passes for a quarterback. Yeah. You're telling me Matthew Stafford in the game tonight, if he gets back Puka Nakua and also now Cooper Cup, that he can't throw for two touchdown passes. And most times that you like those one and a half numbers, Ben, minus 125s, minus 130s, minus 150s, minus 160s. Oh, easily get that. You're getting plus money on Matthew Stafford to throw two touchdown passes in a game where he's going to be at home on turf and not worried about any weather conditions here with a total that's close to 50 points. That sounds like something I might be buying into. But it is also, you have to understand, the best part about living in the social media era is we're going to find out all afternoon what Puka Nakua's statistics might look like if he plays a certain amount. You might get those leaks. Say, hey, look, he's full go. We don't even have to work him out pregame. We know he's ready to go, and he's going to have a full capacity of that playbook. That should change some things. But the one thing it won't change is here, if both those quarterbacks, or, excuse me, both those wideouts are playing, I'm more keyed up on Matthew Stafford now than it would be Sam Darnold. Yeah, so DRS, when you look at the quarterbacks, there you see it for Sam Darnold, by the way. 11 yeah. touchdowns in the first four games. Only one single touchdown to two INTs in the last mm -hmm. two. Great running backs playing in this game. Aaron Jones has been huge as both a running back and receiver this year. Kyron Williams has scored a rushing touchdown in nine consecutive games. Or is it the wide receivers? We've talked so much about Cup and Nakua. We almost forget about Justin Jefferson, who's at 81 yeah. receiving yards at bare minimum in five straight games what is your favorite prop at drs if there was one for the skill positions you know, it might be, it will include all the skill positions in this. There is a prop bet that I love on the FanDuel Sportsbook on a week-to-week -week basis, if it makes sense, and now it does tonight. One rushing touchdown and one passing touchdown for each one of those football teams, and I believe it pays out close to a two-to-one price. So if you're just going to encompass all of those players together, and now if you get Coop, because the way, I think Justin Jefferson catches a touchdown pass. I definitely think Kyron yeah. Williams runs one in, but now you're going to throw Cooper Cup and Puka Naku in there, which opens up everything on that offense. Why can't we get those rushing touchdowns and passing touchdowns for a two-to-one price. I think that makes sense. DRS, enjoy the money line as always, my friend. Yeah. Have fun tonight on NFL football in-game live game day. So many live angles for this one for sure. I will see you on Monday.